Number 37. Apply the loop rule to loop blah, 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 blah in figure 21.52. All right, so let's outline the uh, let's outline the loop. So we're starting at point A, all right, and then it tells us to go to K. So it looks like, up oh, there's K. And then it says to go to L, and then E, and then D. So it looks like we got to go up here, boom, right? And then to C, B, and then back to A. So there's our loop, all right? And we have to move in the direction that they told us, all right? So in other words, we have to move just like this in a counterclockwise direction around this top loop okay now before we get started um yo, oh by the way check out i think 31 and 32 i went through a nice detailed analysis even the problem prior to this i think it was 36. um i said i was going to go a little faster but i i think i wound up taking my time i'm going to try to go faster on this one we'll see who knows um but um the first thing here is I would suggest to start out with making sure you understand the direction of all the currents. All right. So first thing is they gave us I2. Now I2 will be I2 for the entirety, okay, of this length all the way to the next junction. Okay, the constants, the, the, the constant, the current stays constant, double C there, right? Confusing. The current stays constant anytime you're in a straight line, okay? or a connected line, maybe not straight, straight might not be the best word, but anytime you're in a connected line. Now, once you get to this junction, yes, it's still connected, but now there's kind of an opportunity for current to flow a couple of different ways, depending upon the problem. So I2 will only be I2 for the entirety of this segment, okay? Now take a look at I1. Now they gave you I1 over here, but the, they didn't tell you what's going on on this side. However, remember what I was just mentioning was that the current will remain constant, all right, for the entirety of a particular segment. So the current here will be the same as the current across here will be the same as the current traveling down until it reaches a junction. So this whole part here up here is going to be I1. All right. Now what we're going to do, given those currents, I'm now going to analyze this circuit using the loop rule. So the first thing is I write down my formula. You know, you might know this slightly differently, but I like to do it this way. To me, it just is easier to, to plug stuff in, but that's just me. So the loop rule says that the sum of all of the uh, potential um, rises, all right, minus the sum of all of the potential falls or drops will be equal to zero. Now, I guarantee if you watch those videos, 31, 32, and I guess 36, and now this one, this will be cake, all right? This will be cake. So, um, and who doesn't like cake? You know what I mean? So let's now, uh, let's now take a, take this apart. So we're starting at point A and we got to get to point K, but in order to get to point K, we have to travel through a battery. Now notice the big line represents a positive terminal and the little line represents the negative terminal. If you're moving from negative to positive, aren't you getting happier? Isn't your potential rising? Sure. Right. And therefore this value of 48 volts, they already gave us the potential. We don't have to do any kind of calculation. Uh, they gave us the potential that's going to get plugged into the potential rise category. Nice and easy. All right. So let's plug it in 48. I'm going to leave out the units because um, they're all going to be in terms of volts. Now, after I pass through the battery, okay, here I am. After I pass through that battery, maybe let me highlight it in green. After I pass through the battery, I'm going to go to K and then oop, to get to L now, I had to pass over this resistance, right? Now notice that I'm moving in the same direction as the current is moving or the current uh, as they told me the current's moving and therefore that represents a potential fall anytime you are moving with the current okay in analyzing the loop you're moving with the current it's a potential fall if you were going the other way and analyzing the circuit in the opposite direction and the current you knew was pointing to the right and you were analyzing the loop going to the left there it's a potential rise fairly straightforward so now what we're going to do is we're going to plug in now the potential drop across this resistor. Now remember Ohm's law, V is equal to IR. So if I want to know the potential fall or even rise, right, uh, along this particular resistor, meaning voltage, right, I have to then know, so let's call this VA, that would have to equal the current flowing through that particular resistor times then that resistor's resistance. So notice they gave us the resistance of 0.5. So they gave us this piece of the formula. And we know that it's I2, current I2 flowing through it. Now, we can't actually calculate it because they didn't give us I2. All right, but and maybe we can solve it in the end with some substitutions and whatnot. That's not the point of this problem, though. The point of this problem is just to set up the loop rule. 
And therefore, all I'm going to do for i is I'm going to plug in i2, right? And I'm going to plug that now into my potential false category. So notice I'm going to create, I'm going to leave myself a little space. Maybe I need some, we'll see. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my i2, uh, where's the, that's the current, right, i2. And I'm going to multiply, because remember, v, all the all potentials go in here. I thought I was going to go quickly through this, but I guess I'm not. So this represents i2 multiplied by then the resistance of 0.5, right? This is just Ohm's law. This is saying that's just volt, the voltage, right? So instead of writing it though this way, I'm, you know, we usually write the value first, write the number. So I'm just going to write 0.5 i2, okay? And that's going to stick, that's going to stay uh, the same the whole time. All right, I'm not going to keep reworking it. Um, so then a little plus sign, a little plus sign here maybe, right? Because we'll probably add some stuff. Okay. Now getting back to the uh, to the problem here. So now we're going to go from uh, L to E, I guess. And oh, we got to pass through resistance. And look, same thing. We're traveling in the direction of the current. So it's a potential fall. Easy peasy. So just plug that in. Now the resistance is going to be 40 and the current is still uh, I2. Uh, so here we have 40 times I2. All right. And a little plus sign. Now I have to go, now I'm going to go from E to D. But if you notice now, when I'm going from E to D, I'm traveling now against this current. The current they told me is going down. And now I'm analyzing the loop up. So that represents a potential rise. Okay. So what I got to do is do the same thing. Just plug the value in here in the potential rise category. It's very, very straightforward. Now, remember the current flowing through this resistor we already said was I1. So therefore, it's going to be the resistance of that resistor 20 times then I1. Easy enough. And let's keep going, right? So we're going around the circuit, right? Do, 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 do. Oh, and to get from D to C now, we got to travel through this resistor. We're traveling in the opposite direction of the stated current. And therefore, it's going to be a potential rise. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that value of 0 0.1, that's the resistance, and multiply it by the stated current of I1. All right, cool. So let me give myself a little more space. Maybe we'll need to add more. And now, oh, we get to a battery, right? So we're, we're next now moving through the battery. And notice that uh, we're going from a long bar to a short bar, right? A long bar to a short bar, and oh, we're going from positive to negative. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Our potential is falling. So therefore, this voltage that they gave us, which represents a potential, will go under the potential falls category. So we just plug it in. 24. Look at that. All right. Now we're getting closer and closer to A, but let's see. Can we get there yet without traveling through a resistance? Oh, no, we can't, right? So we got to travel through this resistance here. Notice how the current is pointing in the opposite direction. Therefore, that will go in the potential rise category. So it's going to be the resistance of 5 multiplied then by the current that's passing through that which is I1. And now guess what, ladies and gentlemen, it's all over. Okay, there it is. There's your formula. It's obviously not solvable at this moment because we have two unknowns in it, but maybe we'll have to set up some other equations if we needed to solve stuff. So one thing I want to say before I let you go is that notice here, let's just look at this one, for example, the current was flowing in the same direction as how we were analyzing the loop. And therefore, this was a potential fall. And you might say, well, I was taught when it's a potential fall, I plug this in as a negative, right? So it should be negative 0.5 times uh, the I2. But wait a minute, Andrew, you did a positive here. What? What's going on? Well, I did, but if we distribute the negative, all of these will be negative, okay? So if you learned it that way, great. Don't use this formula then if you want to keep it in the way you learned it. That's fine. Don't use the formula because if you plug this in as a negative, and then this is a negative. Well, they canceled themselves out. Now it's totally wrong. All right, so you got to choose a method. Doesn't matter to me which one, but I think this one to me makes a little more sense. It's easier. I don't got to worry about the signs all the time. I just set this up, right? I memorized the formula. It's so simple. Rise minus fall, right? Rises are happy. You're going to subtract then all the falls, okay? Right? If you had a lot of, if you had a lot of great, uh, I don't know, experiences and you subtracted all the bad experiences, that would kind of be your net. Right? If you had equally great experiences and equally bad experiences, you'd kind of be indifferent. So I don't know. It's just easier for me to understand and memorize that. And then I just plug in the values. I don't have to worry about signs every single time. Because instead of, and think about it this way, there's three times you have an opportunity to forget to write your negative in. One, two, three. That's three opportunities for a simple human error. In this particular case, all I have to do is I just have to make sure I put it into the right category. 
I don't have to necessarily worry about the sign. All right. I mean, that's just my opinion. Does not matter though. Whatever you like. All right. So guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope that helped. Please remember to help us out if you can and subscribe. Tell your friends, hit that like button. It really does mean a lot. It allows us to produce a lot more videos too for you. All right. Thank you very much.